One of the challenges we have when installing new equipment into our data centers and our networks is that eventually this hardware and software will be outdated. We refer to this as end of life or EOL. This is when the manufacturer of that piece of equipment decides they are no longer going to support that particular product. They may continue to provide security patches and updates, but they are no longer going to provide new versions of software or enhance the features associated with that product. And eventually, the manufacturer of this equipment may decide to no longer produce any type of security updates. When there are no type of updates coming from a product, we refer to that as end of support or EOS. You won't receive any patches, any updates, any new features, or anything associated with that particular product. When a product moves into end of life, we can put together a plan and a budget for replacing that product over a period of time. But when a product hits end of support, this becomes a significant security concern, especially since we know that we will never receive another security update for that product. These ongoing patches and bug fixes can be very important for maintaining the uptime and availability of these devices, especially when these updates are associated with stability fixes. But these might also be fixes that close security holes, which may be just as important as maintaining the uptime of the device. We often see this with operating systems, where we may receive a service pack every quarter, and we may have to install a large number of updates to these systems when we first install the OS. Many organizations provide monthly updates on a recurring schedule. This means we know exactly when the latest updates are going to arrive, and we can set up our plans for deployment around those update timeframes. And occasionally, a manufacturer will introduce an update outside of the scope of that normal monthly update. This is often associated with a security concern, especially when a zero day or some other type of significant security event occurs. It's not unusual to see updates to operating systems occur constantly across many aspects of that operating system. For example, we can have updates for Windows, Linux, our iOS and Android devices, and anything else that might be running an OS. It's very common to see these monthly updates occur for the operating systems. These might have bug fixes and security patches, but we might also be making changes to the operating system ourselves. We might be modifying user accounts and changing the way that users interact with the operating system. For example, we might increase the minimum password links, we might change the complexity of the passwords required for the operating systems, or we might change the way that users are able to access the operating systems, and we might deploy those updates to the operating systems on demand. We might also change the configurations of the built-in firewalls on these devices. These operating systems provide us with a way to limit where a user may visit by IP address or URL, or there might be changes that enhance the security features on that device. And there are constant changes to the embedded anti-malware and antivirus that's included with many of these operating systems. If we're managing a purpose-built appliance or a purpose-built piece of hardware, then we don't usually have access to the operating system that's on that device. And often, these devices have their own operating system and configurations. We refer to the software that's running this piece of hardware as the firmware of that device. So if you're working with printers, cable modems, or other devices that have their own embedded operating system, you might be required to update that firmware occasionally to close security holes. This update may be done over the network, or it may require you to visit the device and physically connect to the device to perform the update. We know that we can't use this hardware unless the software in this device is working properly. So it's a good idea to have a plan for upgrading this that would include a way to fall back to a previous version if that newer version runs into a problem. It's often a good idea to save those firmware binaries in a safe place so that if later on down the road you wanted to go back to a previous version, you would have access to all of that code. One of the challenges with managing firmware in your printers, your modems, and other devices is that these companies are very good at manufacturing hardware, but they may not be as good at maintaining the firmware that runs in those devices. An example of this would be the Train Comfort Link 2 thermostats, where you could control the temperature on the thermostat from your phone. There were three vulnerabilities presented to Train in April of 2014 but we didn't receive updates to the firmware until April 2015, and it took until January of 2016 to be able to get the final update for that device. 
It would be up to the security team of your organization to determine if that device should remain on the network or if you should find other alternatives instead of that thermostat. Another important aspect of lifecycle management is what you do with the device when you don't need it anymore. This would be the decommissioning process, and it's the way that you dispose of an asset once you no longer need to use it. We see this often with desktops, laptops, mobile devices, and anything else that becomes outdated and is no longer supported by the manufacturer. But there's data on that device that we want to be sure doesn't get into the hands of someone else. We need some way to sanitize the media or simply destroy the device to protect all of that data. This might also involve legal issues, especially if there's certain types of data that your organization is not allowed to destroy. So you may end up storing this equipment off-site or in a secure location until such time that it's able to be destroyed or disposed of properly. And what you do not want to do is simply dispose of this in your normal trash. Eventually, someone will come across that equipment and they will either get access to the data or they'll sell that equipment to someone else who will then get access to the data. Although we often want to recycle this hardware, we want to be sure we do it in a way that protects the confidentiality of the data contained on all of these devices. An ongoing part of lifecycle management is change management. That's because we are constantly making changes in our computing environments. We're upgrading software on a switch. We're making changes to a firewall configuration. We're modifying a router table or making some other modification to software or configurations. This needs to be a managed process and something that we can track, monitor, and be able to modify if we run into a problem. Most organizations will have a very clearly defined change management process. This would include how often you're able to make changes, the window that you have to be able to make those changes in an environment, the process itself for installing those changes in your environment, and then finally, a process for rolling back if you run into problems. And if your organization does not have a formal change management process, this might be difficult to implement. You need to make sure that everyone understands the importance of having a centralized change management process and that everyone follows that process before making any modifications to any device. Another important aspect of lifecycle management is how we handle ongoing service requests. This is often done through a help desk. They'll receive a phone call. They'll input a ticket into a centralized process tracking system. Those tickets will be triaged and provided to someone who can resolve the problem. And then they will close the ticket and move to the next one in the list. Almost every organization has a process tracking system, and, and although there are many different types of software to provide this function, they're all very similar in how they operate. 